Welcome to a new episode of Getting Started with Ecometabolomics. In this episode, we're going to talk about preliminary experiments and tests before starting a metabolomic study. Using metabolomic techniques in ecological research is never as straightforward as often assumed, especially not for beginners. In the next few minutes, we'll give you the four most important reasons for preliminary experiments and suggest what to test in advance. So, reason one, to get an overview of the entire process. A metabolomics workflow has many steps, and most of these steps have to be adapted specifically for each different project. Preliminary experiments are then especially useful familiarizing the research team with where the data comes from and how it's structured, particularly so when the approach is more or less new to the team. Therefore, a preliminary experiment is a good opportunity to build relationships between the members of the research team, estimate how long each step of the research will take, make clear which methods are available and what parameters need to be optimized and adapted, clarify what software is needed, and estimate the costs of consumables, chemicals, instrument fees, and software. Reason two, learning the practicalities of the metabolomic workflow. The more practice you get, the better the quality of the data you produce. Every step of a new workflow involves uncertainty and is prone to errors. All of its steps influence its outcome. Every one of the steps from the original treatment procedure to the efficiency of grinding the plant tissue. A preliminary experiment gives you the opportunity to get to know the different techniques, methods and data analyses you'll need. The experience gained will save you time, resources and money when you come to do your main experiment. Reason 3. Preliminary experiments gives you an opportunity to work out what you expect from the metabolomic data and to clarify how this approach fits in with your scientific question. In some cases, you might, in a preliminary experiment, be able to analyze some samples by mass spectrometry. The resulting data sets are perfectly suited to help you get used to the data structure. In addition, they help you to understand how you might use the metabolomic data to test your hypotheses. Reason four. Preliminary experiments let you test the effect of your workflow on the variability of the data. For clear answers to our biological question, we want clear statistical effects of our treatments on the organisms we're testing. In the example here, we want to know if the larva feeding on the roots changes the metabolites produced by the leaves. We want the effect of the root feeding treatment to be clear and not hidden by variance. Variability in process may well increase troublesome variance. But there are several factors that cause variability in metabolomic data. There's biological variability. This arises from the genetic background of the plant, from its location and the growing conditions, and from feeding behavior of the larvae. But there's also technical variability. This arises from the work process itself due to inconsistent sampling or varying conditions of drying, grinding and sample extraction. If the biological and technical variability are not properly handled, they might combine to obscure any effect of treatment. And they might create a false effect of treatment if the variability differs between the different treatments. Preliminary experiments help identify the factors causing biological and technical variability. Next, we're going to suggest ways of using preliminary experiments to test different steps of the metabolomics workflow. Where needed, we'll refer to other videos of this series 
where you can find more information. Experimental design. If you're collecting plants from the field, make sure that there are enough plants at your sampling site to give enough material. You'll need enough plants growing under similar environmental conditions for at least five biological replicates. Similar environmental conditions mean, for example, similar light intensity and soil composition. Grow some of the plants you're going to test in a greenhouse so as to monitor their growth rate. You can then detect the optimal time for applying the treatment and for sampling the plants. Or, for the same reasons, you could frequently visit your sampling site. Pay special attention to the amount of biomass. Make sure you'll be able to obtain enough sample material for all the tests you're planning. About 100 milligrams of fresh material, equivalent to 20 milligrams of freeze-dried, is needed for a metabolomic extraction. Test the treatment method in advance. Will the treatment have the same strength for all plants and take place at the same time and same position? Please remember that the metabolome can change dramatically within minutes or even seconds in response to an external stimulus. Time your sampling procedure. In metabolomics research, you'll need to treat and sample dozens or even hundreds of plants. It's important to know how long these steps take for each plant so as to make sure treatment and sampling occur as simultaneously as possible. If there's a long delay, conditions will differ between the plants handled early and those handled late. And this will increase variability. Timing your procedures in a preliminary experiment will lead to better and more realistic planning. Test your sample processing. You need to find out what the technical variability is and how robust your methods of sample processing are. To do this, we recommend processing several samples of material in a preliminary experiment. This will help answer the following questions. Are the drying conditions enough to ensure the samples are water free? Does your grinding method produce homogeneous and finely ground material? And is your extraction method equally affected for all samples? The analytical method. This part of the workflow can easily be tested by injecting one of your samples onto the analytic instrument you've chosen to use. If you are not the person running the instrument, you could ask for help at this point. The injection of one sample can show you whether the chromatographic part of the analysis is producing enough peaks and if they have sufficient intensity and are separated well enough. If that's not the case, the method needs to be adjusted to improve the number of peaks and their separation and intensity. Measuring your sample in positive and negative mode tells you whether all your samples need to be measured in both modes or whether only one is sufficient. Furthermore, the injection of the same sample multiple times in the instrument can give you information about the instrumental variance in retention time and peak intensity. If you plan to do MSMS -MS with your samples, you can also test whether the parameters for fragmentation fit your approach or need to be adjusted. Data analysis. An advanced use of a preliminary experiment is to use the preliminary data it produces to test the analytical pipeline. If you're not familiar with this pipeline, get help from somebody who is. For this data analysis, there are many different programs. They include open source software like XCMS and MS-Dial. 
and they include vendor-specific software from the companies that sell the instruments. Which is used depends on the operator. Processing data from your own preliminary experiments helps you learn with the details of the data analysis software and the effect of different processing parameters. Depending on how you did your preliminary experiment, you may even be able to try out some statistical analyses with this data. Annotation. Most metabolomic experiments aim for at least partial annotation of the metabolites detected. This is usually the bottleneck in metabolomics research. If preliminary data are available, we highly recommend testing the available annotation pipeline as well. It is also worth searching the literature for published metabolites in the plant of interest. This prior knowledge might even help identify the standard compounds you might need. You can then look for them in your lab or order them. This video described the importance of preliminary experiments for understanding the eco-metabolic workflow. Thank you for watching.